right, let's all stand. So I take our song books to page 31. We'll sing He Lives. Come right down behind you, underneath you. Right at the chair there. Page 31. We'll sing He Lives. Amen. Page 31. Page 31. Here we go. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my stair away. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blasts. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my stair away. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek and the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so God and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along the narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. Stay standing. Let's take our psalm books to page 65. Page 65, we'll sing just over in the glory land. Amen. Page 65. Here we go. I've a home prepared where the saints abide, just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, there we no mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. I am on my way to those mansions fair, <coughs> glory land, there to sing God's praise in His glory share. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, a John happy angel band, just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. What a joyful thought that my Lord I'll see Just over in the glory land And when kindred say they forever be Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand. Just over in the glory land, with the blood was strong, I will shout and sing. 
just over in the glory land. Glad hosannas to Christ our Lord and King, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land, <coughs> over in the glory land, there where the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. Amen. amen. That's right. Amen, brother. Amen. Not every day you get to be in the house of the Lord, amen. And there's not everybody who wants to be in one, amen. So, well, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that we can be here again. What a blessing to be in your house, Lord, with the folks, the people of God, these folks right here. God, I pray that you'll get the glory, the praise, the honor. And God, help us tonight. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. You can be seated. All righty, do we have all our prayer requests in? If you if you got some uh, some guys, you know, in the green jackets, I can pick them up. Green jackets. Amen, we're glad you are here. Amen. If you get an opportunity to hear Sunday morning's message last Sunday, you can get it on YouTube. You need to listen to it. Amen. And uh, not because I preach it, it's, what, it's the contents of what was preached, amen. Help you out. So, praise the Lord. Well, we got these prayer requests. Brother Paul Davis says, pray. Uh, he wants to thank you, amen. That's all I can see. The Lord's word is pure, amen. Thank God for that. It is pure. That means there is nothing in it other than purity. So people who say no one has the inerrant word of God are what? False teachers. They're liars. Because I'm going. To, I'm telling you straight up. And I, by the way, I don't mix words when it comes to saying stuff like that. Because I've been around long enough preaching the word of God, seeing what things go on, and. Uh, we do have the pure word of God. Amen. Used to be a time when I was growing up as a kid, even as a lost person, people believed that the Bible was the word of God. Amen. And it was a holy book. Amen. I mean, they would not come out against the Bible at all. They were afraid. They shook in their boots. And guess what? Today, they defecate on it. They tear the pages out. They use it for rolling papers. They, they, uh, they'll toss it on the ground, throw it on a dashboard, throw it on the floor. They don't give a rip about the Bible. And they, wait, they're going to have to answer to God for what they do with the Word of God. Amen. I mean, <laughs> can you imagine having truth? It's like Judas Iscariot. Has, he, he, was, he kissed the door of heaven and went to hell. Here, this old world has an opportunity to own this book. And some may even pick it up and then thumb through the pages, and then put it back down and never open it up. They come that close to being saved. Hmm? They're not, they're not going to have an excuse. Hmm. Amen. At least there's only one person that agrees with me on it. Amen. You know, the older I get, the more I see, the, the, the crazier I see people. Right. This whole world's getting crazier and crazier. By the way, it's interesting. I was, I was listening to some... Uh, some things of the past, done in the 30s and 40s, with women. And I'm talking about how women were acted and stuff, and the way they responded to things. And and, um, and now I, lo I look at the women today, and I'm amazed how much different they are. Yes, Seriously. The Bible says, now listen carefully, the Bible says she wore the attire of a harlot. Uh -huh. Didn't say she was a harlot. It says she was wearing the same thing a harlot wears. It used to be in our country that the women were women, ladies. And uh, and now it's hard to tell. <laughs> Seriously, it's hard to tell. And they wonder why guys act the way they do around them. Because they're broadcasting everything. You might as well just go ahead and get yourself a catalog and post everything you got in it. Huh? And give it to men because that's what they're looking at. <laughs> you think I'm joking. And... Uh, some of you are old enough to understand. 
You know. You know. Our country is when we when we give up our morals, we give up we give up what's good. We give we give up everything. Yeah, the only direction you can go when you give up your morals is down. The, even the communists knew that. They said, "What we'll do is chip away at the morality of America, and they'll fall." You know what? You know you know what they one of the things they said they were going to do bring pornography into our our society. You know another thing they were going to bring in rock and roll music. That's the communists said that. They studied rock music to see how it affects man. They found out it was so detrimental to a man's mind and his heart that they decided they were going to infiltrate our country with immorality called rock and roll. Do you know, do you know Aleister Crowley? Aleister Crowley uh, hated America so much that he wanted uh, America to be permeated with this trash, like the rock music. Uh, he wanted them to be permeated with pornography. Satan worship and stuff, so they could destroy him, yep. destroy America. He hated America. Uh, by the way, if you don't know, the Beatles were uh, Aleister Crowley fans. Uh, the um, uh, Le Le uh, Led Zeppelin, Aleister Crowley fans. Huh? Uh, Anton Lavey, Aleister Crowley fan. You say who's Anton Lavey? He's say he he's the one who wrote the Satanic Bible, and also he's the one that uh, is on the cover of a. Uh, the uh, wing, uh, not wings. Uh, uh, he's on the cover of uh, the Eagles album, Hotel California. He's uh, he also was trained uh, through uh, the writings of Aleister Crowley. Mm. Adolf Hitler was taught by Aleister Crowley. I preached a whole series of messages about Aleister Crowley and his life and how he influenced the world. He was he was voted the most wicked man on the face of the earth. Huh? He was raised in a Baptist home. What year was this? Aleister Crowley in yeah. the early 1900s. Early 1900s. No, no, he's and he's not from America. He's from England. And in fact, uh, Led, uh, Led Zeppelin, um, uh, Jimmy Page owned Aleister Crowley's uh, mansion. He bought it. And that's where John Bonham died, which was their drummer. He died in Aleister Crowley's mansion, and um, and uh, Jimmy Page was blamed for. Robert Plant's uh, child dying because he said because you got into that black magic, see, and uh, Aleister Crowley was in black magic. He even in his book called Magic with a K, not a C, he wrote he wrote that he sacrificed at least six children, and they never arrested him. He confessed it. <laughs> Amen. I mean that's it was wicked back then. You know what? You know what that? You know where that guy's going? He confessed that he sacrificed six children. He's going to prison, and we're going to hang him. I don't care. Hey, for, forsake the trial. <laughs> Put him, take him to the gallows. You don't need a public pretender. Hmm? He needs to meet the Savior. <laughs> Amen. How would we get on that? That kind of stuff bothers me. That's what. Though, that's what, that's the way our our country's gone. Aleister Crowley has affected. Hollywood, the rock music industry, not just rock music, country music and so forth, different music uh, uh, venues. Um, he's, uh, he's influenced uh, uh, television. He's influenced radio. <laughs> he's influenced a lot of things. Alex Crowley was, it was wicked. He burning in hell today. And, uh, yeah, you, 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 it's too bad. And a lot of people, in fact, they, the Beatles sang about him. Amen. And Beatles, Beatles came and took America. America was ripe for the picking because they just took Bible and prayer out of school. Yeah. Beatles came in right after Bible and prayer was taken out of school. You guys don't remember that. I remember it. I remember them prophesying, so to say, in the newspapers, Beatles are going to infest America. That's what it, that was the title. Infest America. So everybody thinks we're going to have these beetles that are going to come from like Africa. So they're going to fly over here and, and destroy our crops and everything. They didn't know it was the name of a rock group. Huh? Got blindsided by it. And they did. They come in and destroy America. They talked about revolution. They talk, they, they even even what was in uh, Charles Manson, Helter Skelter. 
I mean, him and Beatles clicked on that. You guys, you don't know much about Charles Manson. That guy is a one wicked dude. He looked like the devil, I'm telling you. That guy was wicked. And uh, doing the things he did. <laughs> he, he, he said he was going to, that's what he said. My whole goal was to get the blacks to rise up against the whites. Now, wait a minute. What's happening today? You think the devil's uh, tactics have changed? He's trying to get people to look at the color of their skin instead of like, like what uh, uh, Martin Luther King said, the content of the character. That's the way it was supposed to be. <coughs> Who? No, 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 no. Yeah. Now it's Sirhan, Sirhan. Did he? I didn't. I didn't hear that. I don't know why he had been released. He murdered a. He murdered a senator. <laughs> huh? The, the running for president. Robert, Robert Kennedy. Hmm. Yeah, he had a. He had a. Uh, he he killed a senator in a kitchen of a restaurant. Hmm. Amen. All the. You know what? It's a good thing I'm not the police. <laughs> They want to. They want to talk about being uh, radical. I would. I'd save taxpayers a lot of money. <laughs> I might go to jail, but I'm saving taxpayers some money. Amen. Guy looks guilty to me. I just saw him pull the trigger and blow the guy away. I guess it's time for him to to, to meet his maker too. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a down pat over here, amen, praise yeah, the Lord. Amen. So, uh, how do we do, did Paul, see what happens when you write a prayer request? Get everybody sidetracked. I can't believe it. With well, a pure word, that's what it was, a pure word. Because it's not pure in a lot of things that are done and said today. It says, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Pray for the Lord to provide a way for him to get his teeth done according to his will. Pray for an uh, unquenchable thirst for God's word and uh, pray for lost souls to be reached pray for leaders that God would save the Democrats amen they do need saving all for gainful employment and three unspoken uh, faith got to vote for the first time uh, Monday, uh, Tuesday so took her down to the voting booth and took pictures had to take pictures so she could see she was voting amen so praise the Lord. Uh, Mrs. Grissom says she got an unspoken request and stress at work. Pray for that. You know, that goes away. Amen. For the joiners, wisdom and health for both uh, Mrs. Joiner, Dr. Joiner. He's got surgery on October. He's going to have surgery. They're going to <laughs> without any indication of uh, um, what do you call it? Canceling it. Right now it's a go. So pray for him and his surgery. Uh, Brother Tom Davis says, pray for things that go according to God's plan with uh, with who governs all over all of us. Amen? Yeah, that's a good idea. That God's, God's will be done and all that. What a mess this pol politics is. We used to have statesmen, now we got politicians. And their their life for politicians. It was never meant for the, a politician to be in office for 20, 30, 40 years. There were two or three terms, and that was it, and they were out. Most uh, most our statesmen were politicians were uh, run for office. They weren't politicians. They run for office after two or three terms. They went back to doing what they did before they became uh, in office. Got in office. They went back to farming or whatever they were doing. Last time I ever heard of someone doing that was, believe it or not, Harry S. Truman. He went. He didn't go and buy a house in, you know, Martha's Vineyard or. You know the Bahamas or something, and go retire there. He went back to Missouri. Went back to live in the house he lived in before he became president. Little three-bedroom home, you know, because <laughs> huh? he was done with his political career. He was done. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Have you ever heard David being a politics? Oh, yeah. Politics, yeah. 
Polly, Polly means one. Uh, a tick means sucker. <laughs> yes, yes, the blood suckers. Amen. That's about what they are nowadays. They're sucking the people dry of all their money. Instead of giving us the freedom and liberty we're supposed to have, what our Constitution affords us, they don't live in the Constitution. That's why I don't know why they're in office still. But I'm going to tell you something. We do have a militia. And, and when it comes time, I'm, going to, I'm telling you, they say the strongest army on the face of the earth is the American people. Because they got more guns than any army. I'm, I see people selling, I see people selling uh, those kind of things on the side of the road. Just on the side of the road. It even has signs. Huh? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> you know, and they got... Well, one day, one day, but see, everybody had to be against Israel. America right now is not against Israel. Say, everybody would have to be. America is for Israel. We're still for Israel. We've got a president that's for Israel. In fact, Obama was against Israel. He, he hated Israel, and I think that's why we had so much judgment on our country in those 88 years. Had a lot of things happen, like Katrina and stuff. Uh, and they said, well, God has nothing to do with it. God has all the things to do with the weather. <laughs> Everything to do with the weather. And uh, so what I'm saying is, is um, once America turns its back on Israel, you guarantee we're linking, we're linking with all the evils on this world, in this world. I mean, we're heading that way anyway, because look what's happening in our country. Oh, Lord, come back. Amen. Seriously. Come back, Lord. Take us out of this mess. It'd be a great thing if uh, all the saved will leave. By the way, one guy said to me, he got mad at me. He goes, it would, this world would be better without Christians. I said, one day you'll know. Because God is going to call all the Christians out of this earth, and the world's going to find out what it's like without Christians. And they're going to find out it's going to be the worst time on the face of the earth ever in history. Things are going to fall apart. Things are going to, I mean, the Bible says the sun, the star, and moon sky drops from the sky. Amen. That's, that, that would be a pretty fearful thing. All of a sudden, there's no, there's no light. You, you say, no, it wouldn't be. Look at the three hours that there was darkness when Jesus Christ was on the cross. People feared for three hours. Think about it happening for seven years or somewhere in that area. Can I ask you one last yes, sir. No, you don't want to ever not ask questions. Okay, go ahead. Well, yeah, he's going to be, he is going to be our leader forever and ever. We're not, we're not going to have, we're not going to have a, a evil dictator or anything like that. Because Christ only makes good decisions and right decisions. So it's not going to be like the dictator that man thinks of, something like an Adolf Hitler, Stalin, Mussolini, uh, a Marx, or someone like that. Uh, he's going to be, all, every decision he makes is going to be right. Right? And it's, and, and it's going to benefit us. Every bit of it is going to be a benefit for us. Just like us worshiping the Lord. Some people think that he's selfish because he's getting the worship. It actually benefits us. It builds a relationship between us and God. And, when you, and if you've ever had a relationship between you and God, a close one, you say, man, this is great. This is a benefit for me. <laughs> Seriously. And so the thing is, but see, dictators that we've seen in the past, they don't want to have a relationship with the people. They want to kill the people, just like over there in China now. They're killing all those folks. Huh? They're putting them in camps. Huh? The Christians especially, they're killing them. Over in the Middle East, they're killing Christians. They're crucifying them, putting them on crosses and crucifying them. They're putting them, I actually seen video, they put Christians in, in cages, pour gasoline on them, and then run gasoline back to where they're standing, light that, and watch it, watch it go towards that cage, and these guys can't get away, and they're trying to, they're frantic and panicking, and all of a sudden they burst into flames, and they watch them burn to death, and they laugh about it. That's torture. See, thing is, is uh, that's, that's what evil dictators would do. You know what Christ does? He loves you. He loves you. There's a difference. And uh, you're not hated by your dic the dictator. You're loved by the leader, the ruler. 
He's going to have the perfect government. The Bible says the government's upon his shoulders. By the way, there's nothing with God being the only ruler and he not having a cabinet and all this, you know, and having all the senators and stuff because he is the creator. See, he's not going to make something wrong or evil. He's making it right. He's fixing everything man's messed up. That's what he's doing. <laughs> don't, oh, don't give me a yeah, By the way, good question. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hey, you got a question? Right. Ask it. Praise the Lord. I mean, I got to get through these prayer requests, though. <laughs> Miss Kristen says, "Pray for Jesus to save her family. Her family needs salvation in Jesus Christ." Amen. For her to heal from her car wreck that she had, or getting hit by the car. Miss Irene says, "Pray for uh, Samantha and her husband, their salvation, Kevin's spiritual growth, and all the members of the church protection and her growth in Christ." And to find a godly job. Amen. Oh, I, I guess he didn't, this isn't written all the way down, but I believe I know what he's saying. This is my son James. He says, pray for the new diet that um, uh, Chow's on to fix the enzyme problem that she has and her health problems and that help out. Amen. So pray for that. Doris says, praise the Lord, she's saved, and, uh, and the love and mercy God's given her. Pray for Brother Art. He's got tests on his back tomorrow. Brother Art, a good, faithful man to church. He, ever since this pandemic thing, he's been house-ridden. So pray for him. Kevin says, pray for peace in his heart. And he's got an unspoken request. And for the love of God and, and neighbor with all his heart. Amen. Well, he says amen. That's amen. See, you can't stop him. He, see, when you were pregnant with him and I talked, he'd kick you. So now he's not kicking you. He's just talking. Now he found out his voice works a whole lot better. <laughs> amen. Um, Faith says, pray for church kids' salvation. And pray for Fazio, the Luna, and the Rodriguez family salvation. For Jacob and Diamond to be adopted into our family. Leroy Sr., his health and spiritual. And Leah's pregnancy. That's Leah Karpenko's pregnancy. Maria's got an unspoken request. And for Faith, an unspoken request. And pray for the Western Roundup to go well. Uh, this next March that we'll have. This rest Western Roundup. Robert, it says, pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding for him. Amen. Ronnie and Joanne says, pray for Joanne's family back in the Philippines, especially her mom and dad's health. And she wants to thank God for everything that he's given to them. Amen. What kind of request you got back there, buddy? <laughs> Amen. And uh, <laughs> he, learned that, he learned that message from uh, Jacob. You know what? I found a shirt that says, but God on it. That's all it says, but God. <laughs> I said, I ought to get that shirt for Jacob so he can walk around. Because <laughs> he's always saying something like that. But God and God. And that's his message. That's all he says. <laughs> At least he's, hey, I had a preacher friend that says, when they mention God's God or Jesus Christ's name, he says, I got something to shout about. <laughs> that's what he says. So, hey, you say Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That says a lot. That's a mouthful. Amen. Liz says, pray for her bio family to get saved. By the way, Jacob wants us to pray for his bio family to get saved. Pray for faith and also pray for Liz. Esther says, pray for her bio family to get saved. For Donald and his health. For her bio mom. I don't know where she's at. And uh, Esther writes all over the place that she loves me. She says, I love you. I love you, Papa. Uh, I love you. P.S. I love you, Papa. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I'm serious. We'll pray before we go to we'll go to bed. We'll pray, and she'll kiss me a hundred times on the wall. Mm. Jacob's the same way. Jacob does the same thing. I don't know why. Maybe I just like a big teddy bear, or something. I don't know. <laughs> and with more hair on my face, I probably look like a teddy bear. Amen. Pray for. <laughs> Dan and Rochelle says, pray for faith, peace for faith, and Theodore to continue to grow healthy and fat. I don't think you need to pray for that fat part. 
<laughs> He's a chunk anyway. He's just storing up for his growth, amen. He's growing up. You know what this is, right? He knows his what He discovered a voice. That's what little babies do. They discover it, and they got to use it. Doesn't matter. They don't know when to use it and when not to. They just use it, amen. <laughs> amen. It's funny to me. I think it's kind of cool, but that tells me he's got he's growing, amen, in the right way. Praise the Lord. That's what God says they're a blessing, amen, because you can see their growth. You know, th think about it. How old is he now? On the 6th. Yeah, don't ask Dan. Don't ask Dan. He, did, he had to look at his ring to find out when you guys were married. <laughs> no, I am not hiding the truth. <laughs> Hey, it's typical amongst guys not to remember, okay? But the thing is, think about it. He's, go, he's going to be coming up on two months, and he's already found his voice, and he's using it, and a Christian should be using their voice about two months spiritually. What's that mean? You open up your mouth for Jesus' sake, amen? <laughs> and you might not be the best uh, speaker. Moses said, I can't speak, and you know what God said about it? Who made your mouth? Who made your tongue? And then in the, in, in, in the New Testament, they talk about Moses and said, he went to the best schools in all Egypt. What's that tell me? He was lying to God about his ability to speak. You know what God thinks about when we say the same thing? God says, don't be lying to me. I, I watch you speak. I hear you speak. Are you educated enough? Yeah, you're educated enough. You can open your mouth. Don't even, don't even give me that. You know, God's not fooled by our excuses. I preached a message in a church in Seattle about that, Moses and uh, lying to God. And God, God, every time he told God he couldn't do something or something about why he couldn't go into Egypt, God refuted it with a, with a rebuttal. And, and Moses lost. <laughs> huh? He lost every argument. And I used the same arguments when God called me to preach. God, I can't speak. He said, don't lie to me. <laughs> so you can speak. I've heard you speak. Amen. I said, I can't get up in front of people and speak. He goes, well, who made your mouth? Who made your tongue? I said, well, you did. He says, then let me worry about that part. Obviously, he, he did. He hasn't. I haven't worried about it, and he's actually opened my mouth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because some of you say, why don't you stop speaking? <laughs> Quit speaking, preacher! <laughs> Amen. Quit agreeing. <laughs> Dan's back there agreeing. That's right, preacher. Amen. He's holding up a sign. Amen. <laughs> James and Chow say pray for their health, their finances, and James' safety on the road. He's, he was in Oakland earlier today. And uh, I said, that's too bad. <laughs> That's really too bad to be in Oakland. <laughs> Amen. If you're up farther north in California, that's all right. But Oakland, uh, San Francisco, no. Even though there are some things I like about San Francisco, I like the I like the Fisherman's Wharf. I do like that. I like going into restaurants. I'm not always fond about all the people, but you know, but uh, I like their I like their restaurants and stuff. I like the fact to see all the seals and stuff. That's kind of cool. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. Now, weren't you from San Francisco here? San Jose. San Jose. Oh, you're north of San Francisco. Is it south? Isn't that the capital of California? No. Us. It's all, almost an imp impossibility for us, but Lord, you say we can love and have the love of God. You say we can love our brothers and sisters in Christ, mm -hmm. and that we should if we do not approve the love of God's in us. Mm -hmm. And Lord, help us to walk in the Spirit so we can love like God does, like our Father in Heaven, like, our, like Jesus Christ can, like the Holy Spirit does. God, I pray, keep us from quenching or grieving the Spirit of God. And God, may we be sensitive to the Spirit as He speaks and as He moves. May we not quench or grieve the Spirit in this place. And God, we bring these requests before You. We mention all these requests. And God, I just pray that You'll answer them according to Your will. And that you be glorified through it all. And God, we, uh, I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna just give you some off the top of my head. I think of Jacob and Diamond needing to be adopted. And Jacob's case. Lord, four years he's been in our home. 
and the dad just seemed to not have much interest. But yet they're fighting a case trying to get custody of Jacob without showing interest in these last four years. And God, I pray that you'll just bind Satan in the hordes of hell, turn the hearts of the king that uh, whithersoever they will, you'll they'll go the way and the direction that you want them to go. And God, that you'll give us custody. I pray that they'll file for abandonment and that Jacob will be awarded to us as a child, our child. And same with Diamond, Lord. Work it out to your glory and honor. And God, we want to teach them, both of these children, the Word of God. Teach them how to be saved. And that they'll be raised up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And God, I pray for our church right here. That we'll fear God. And love the Lord. And God, and have, a, have a reverence and respect for your Word. And to lift up your Word like you do above your own name. And God, and then see how precious your word is. And God, we're going to thank you and praise you and give you the glory. Lord, so many requests have unspoken. And every person just about in here has an unspoken request. Help them, Lord. You know what the needs are. You know what their struggles are. You know what, what causes them to bring that request to you. And God, we pray that you will work in a mighty way in the will of the Lord for their sake. And God, help them to receive the will of the Lord and accept it, even if it's not what they see, not the way they want it. Help them to realize that you're working. And God, for you just to be working in our lives, no matter how it seems to us, what a blessing to know that you're taking care. God, we just want to praise you for it. God, help us to know you're in our presence and know that you love us and care for us and uh, that we'll seek your face and find you as you say we can. And God, help us to realize that wisdom is in the streets calling out and help us to find it, Lord, in the open. Let us not turn a deaf eye or close our ears to it. And Lord, help us have an understanding heart to the wisdom of our God. And God, may we receive truth no matter how it comes from reproof, rebuke, exhortation, uh, chastisement, whatever, whatever vehicle you use to bring it to us. God, I just want to give you the praise and the honor and glory for it. I do pray for Faith today. She had a hard thing happen today for her. I pray you be, you be with her. And Lord, uh, uh, it's it a hard thing, just to put it that way. Even our neighbors were broken hearted. And God, I just pray that you help them. Help, uh, help Faith. Be with her. And God, uh, strengthen her. Give her give, give, may she give you the glory through all this. Help her to use it to teach. And Lord, to, to be able to, uh, to help the little ones. Because that's her ministry right now. And to be able to use it for your glory. I know it bothers the little ones. It, they're curious because they're little. It's a new field, a new avenue for them. God, I pray that you'll get praise for it. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Let's take up our offering. Got the offering. Offering guys. Offering guys. Got one over here. Got another one over here. Take up an offering. Then we have singing. And uh, you're singing. Amen, brother. Amen. Brother Dan. Dear God, I want to thank you for bringing us here in your, in your house, Lord, to hear some preaching, have some fellowship later, Lord. We thank you for all the gifts and blessings in our life. We pray as we give a little back that it edifies you and builds your house, Lord. Thank you, and in Jesus' name we all pray. Amen.
Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. How great the pain of searing loss the Father turns His face away as wolves which mar the Chosen One bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart, His wounds have paid my ransom. See this, kids? Look around and see the blessings on this country. It's plain to see how good the Lord has been. But I hear some people say, put that old black book away. And then I just remind them once again. It's just a book that saved me from damnation. It's just a book that cleansed me from my sin. It's just a book that found in this great nation. And it's our only hope to get it back again. God's Ten Commandments, they don't like my King James Bible, oh. they don't care to hear what Jesus Christ has done. Oh, they speak with such conviction and condemn us with such boldness, yep. but just show the book and then just watch wow. them run. Yep. If, if it's just, just a book, why are you running? If it's just a book, why get so mad? If it's just a book, why get so nervous? It's just a book that knows every thought you had. When you open up this book into your heart, it takes a look and it shows you exactly what you are. From the pages there within, it points out your every sin. It discerns the thoughts and intents of your heart. It's just a book that showed me full salvation. It's just a book that read my title clear. It's just a book that gave to me the victory. It's the King James Bible that I hold so dear. It's just a book that saved me from damnation. It's just a book that cleansed me from my sin. It's just a book that found in this great nation. And it's our only hope to get it back again. And it's our only hope to get it back again.
remember the moment I can take you to the place where every burden was lifted, every sin was washed away. But as time passes by, Lord, if ever I fail to remember the price that you paid, remind me of the thorns you wore as a crown, the stripes that you bore. And the blood flowing down, the nails and the weight of my sin. Should a day ever come when I forget what real love calls, remind me of the cross. When I think of your mercy, how you love someone like me. I'm amazed by your goodness, and it brings me to my knees. But if life takes its toll, and it's not well with my soul, then, Lord, take me back to Calvary. Remind me of the thorns you wore as a crown, the stripes that you bore, and the blood flowing down. The nails in the weight of my sin Should a day ever come When I forget what real love calls Remind me of the cross When the Son of Man, the spotless Lamb, suffered and Remind me of the thorns you wore as a crown, the stripes that you bore, and the blood flowing down, the nails and the weight of my sin. Should a day ever come when I forget what real love calls. Remind me of the cross, remind me of the cross. Amen. Remind me of the cross. What a blessing. I'm going to tell you. I didn't think about the cross while well, we were in a guy's house and we were planning on killing him before I was saved, not after I was saved. Don't be worrying it now, preachers and Christians. <laughs> it was before I was saved. I didn't think about the cross. I'm so glad that Christ showed up in my life, Amen. reminded me of the cross. Uh, we, were, we, were, we were literally going to kill a man. We had the plan. We showed up at his house. We went into his house. He doesn't know how close he came to dying that day. And then something happened, and I, I talked him out of killing him. Amen. I don't know why I was the one that cho chosen to talk him out, but I did. And uh, we decided to, r to rob him instead. <laughs> like that's the better choice of the two evils, amen. And so we robbed him instead. But I didn't think about the cross then. But, man, I think about it now. It was God's intervention because who knows where I'd be if we did kill the man and um, have a ministry in prison. So I, I remember preaching in a maximum security prison in, uh, in Indiana. And I was just young then. I was probably 26, 27. I preached there. And I made this statement, which affected the prisoners there. I said, you know what the difference is between you and me? is you got caught. Yeah, that's right. I said, I could be sitting where you're at. Right. Sure. I said, but the Lord saved me. Amen. Doesn't mean he can't save you where you're sitting, Amen. because he can. Yeah. Even after your mistakes, right. your wrong choices, yeah. he can save a man. Yeah. God's not beyond being able to save a man. I, I talked to one man, and, and he was in there for manslaughter. He was in prison for manslaughter, 
And he cried and cried and cried. Sit down the front row, right, right here, right about the middle in the front row. Big guy. You can tell he worked out. He was built like a wedge. <laughs> Probably had a 30-inch waist, but he had like a 50-inch chest kind of a thing. Arms bigger than my legs. And he wept like a baby, just crying. And I, and I thought, wow, well, I must be preaching a pretty good message, <laughs> you know? And I went up to him and afterwards I asked him and he says, God can't forgive me for what I've done. He says, I killed a man. I said, oh no, God can forgive you. Yes, sir. He forgave Moses yeah. after he killed an Egyptian. Hmm? And he killed, forgave David after he killed uh, Bathsheba's husband. I said he forgave Paul after killing Stephen. Huh? I said he can forgive you. There's nothing God can't forgive. But he couldn't get saved. He, he just couldn't believe it. He just couldn't receive Christ. At least at that time. I hope he did later. But he cried and cried and cried. I'm telling you. They sang that song. Huh? The thorns were his crown. Because everything that happened to him as he goes to the cross was to reveal that he was taking our punishment for us. He took all our sin upon him. Every man who ever lived on the earth, every man who ever was living on the earth at that time, and every man who will live on the earth in the future, he took their sin. One man took all men's sin. You can't imagine the burden that was on him. My brother said this to me before he got saved. He says it doesn't make any sense that one man would die for all men. And I said it doesn't make any sense, but it, would ha it happened. I said, you want to know why? Because it was God. It was God in the flesh. He could save men. He rose himself up from the dead. Figure that one out. God rose God up from the dead. <laughs> Huh? How does he do that? I don't know. You tell me about Trinity. Tell me. Explain it to me. Never a good exp explanation about Trinity has ever been spoken. Not to explain it. People like to use egg and water and you know and ice and steam. And they like to use the shell and the yolk and the and the white. But there's also a membrane. There's also a a coating on the outside of the egg to protect it from disease. So there's five parts actually of an egg. So that messes that one up, huh? <laughs> so, uh, and the only reason we know that because we raise chickens and, and eggs and stuff, and so we learned all that. And uh, so I'm just telling you, it's just, it's hard to explain God. It really is because men are a finite mind. Our intelligence only goes so far. And that's why we want to get hold of God so our intelligence will go farther than man's intelligence can go. See, we want to go farther than what man can do. Uh, God does the impossible things, but men only can do great things. That's the best they can do. Nothing's impossible with God. Well, and by the way, you want to get hold of the wisdom and knowledge of God? I'll give you, I'm, going to give you, I'm going to give you the clue. I'm going to give you the, I'm going to give you the formula. How to get the wisdom and knowledge of God. Here it is. You are nothing. And God is everything. And when you who are nothing. Realize God is everything. Then he that is everything. Will do anything with nothing. You know what? He made nothing. Uh, something out of nothing. He created. Everything that's created was made from nothing. But it had to be in his hand. And his ability to mold it. Without an argument. Without a fight. Hmm? See, you say, well, I am not nothing. Okay, what was man made from? The dust of the earth. Where did the dust of the earth come from? From nothing. Case, case closed. You come from nothing. Hmm? Case closed. We come from nothing. That's the formula. It's called the humble spirit. God will give grace unto the humble. See, too many Christians today puff themselves up and say, I'm somebody. Don't you tell me I'm nobody. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're nobody. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. If, if you're somebody, 
And if you can do things all on your own without him, then you're nobody. Because hmm? you need Christ to do something. They, they build fantastic cities. They tried to build a tower of Babel and get to God. And God took care of that. Wonder why? They did it without God. Herod preached a great message. Spoke. Where it was, they said it was like God was speaking. You know what Herod did? He gave Herod credit. He bragged about how great a speaker he was. It wasn't long before God ate him up with worms and he was nobody. He went back to the dust of the earth by where he came from. He thought he was somebody. God said he was to give God the credit. Hmm? You know what? You're supposed to give God the credit too because you can't do anything without him. You say, well, I could drive a car without him. Go ahead and tempt him. We'll see how far you drive that car into that semi. Hmm? Or off that bridge. Or into, a wa into the water. Off into a ditch. We'll see. Hmm? You may be surprised at how often God's kept your vehicle on the road. And, then, and he held the tire together, the cords in the tire together, so that you wouldn't blow a tire and run, roll your car. <laughs> huh? I believe that. Hmm? How many times he's left your, kept your motor together in your car. I'm going to tell you, I was in Bible college. I had a 79 Pinto station wagon. <laughs> Woo! It was my work car. <laughs> I did construction out of a Pinto station wagon. <laughs> I mean, I put ladders and lumber and everything. I mean, we, we, Rodney Martin, my doctor, would help me. And he, we'd have drywall. On. Now, I don't know what we were thinking. We have, dry, we have sheets of drywall on the roof of my car, that Pinto. And we didn't strap it down. Middle of winter, January, sub-zero, holding the drywall, going down the freeway. <laughs> yeah, and it stayed on there. But our hands were numb when we got to the job. <laughs> what were we thinking? <laughs> but I was in Bible college. Car wouldn't start. I said, God, I got to get to work. How am I going to? How am I going to get to work? My car not starting. He says, Pray over it. Okay, Lord, you, this car can't start. I don't know what's wrong with it. I mean, it's not even clicking. I mean, it's like it's dead. No power at all. And I said, You need to get it. Start. Too wonderful for me. Yea, for which I know not. Our Heavenly Father, help us understand what we'll hear tonight. May you get the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. You can be seated. The way, it says the way of a man with a maid. By the way, that does, sometimes it scratches your head. You get scratching and going, now why is that girl listening to that guy? I mean, it looks like he chased a Mack truck and caught it. <laughs> and she's like a model. Like, she should be on the front cover of some kind of magazine or something. I mean, you should put, you, she should be up on stage with lights around her. And she's listening, and she ends up marrying the guy. And you sit there going, now how did that happen? And then the handsome guys, he's sitting there going, how come my wife isn't that beautiful? How come my girlfriend's not that beautiful? What's going on here? See, you can't, you can't figure it out. You don't understand. By, by the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay this down where the rubber meets the road. Men do not understand women. <laughs> and every man would say, amen, preach it, brother. Park there for a while. <laughs> we do not understand women. A woman, you'll say, you say, you'll say something to her, and she'll go, Fine. Okay, what did I say wrong? What did I say wrong? Nothing. <laughs> you said something wrong. She's just not going to tell you. She's not going to give you any information. She's not going to help you out. She's not going to get you out of your mess. She's going to let you. She's going to let you. My wife's going, amen. She, I know. I've been there. And I'm sitting there going, what did I do wrong? Why are you upset at me? I just said hello. It's the way you said it. Don't you know everything was going wrong? And you come home happy. <laughs> Huh? The kids were crying, the dog was barking, and dinner got burned, and you come home happy. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'll come home mean. So I come home mean. <laughs> What's that? Ronnie's, oh, Ronnie's class. You're being patient? You don't look like a patient. 
<laughs> you want to be dismissed, brother? I forgot you even told me. He came over to tell me specifically my class. But hey, go get out of here. You don't need to know this stuff. You got your wife under control. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> He does it. He needs it. He need it. Get the, get the, the audio, brother. <laughs> Everybody stare at her. Make her, make her feel bad. <laughs> but the thing is, we don't understand women. And so it says here, a way, it says right here, a way of a man with a maid. By the way, the, the, the one who wrote Proverbs here, and I believe it's Solomon, Wrote Proverbs here. The, he, go, he goes on. I believe that's why he says, Yea, for which I know not. Huh? For. Yea, he says here, Yea, for which I know not. There be three things which too are too wonderful for me. The eagle, the serpent, the ship. But yea, for which I know not. He said, in the gold mine, it's still a mystery to me. Now, wait a minute. If there's a Solomon, he had a thousand wives and concubines. Huh? He had 700 wives, 300 concubines. You know, concubines aren't girlfriends. 700 wives. I figured it out one day. It would, you would only see one woman. You see the one woman every three years. Huh? That would be horrible. But the way the kingships was, there were some women you wouldn't see at all because they, they made the king mad. Or he, just, he, he didn't like you as well. And there were some that he liked better than he liked others. But the thing is still, he has a thousand wives and concubines, and yet he says, this is a mystery to me. Huh? By the way, he started out bad. He got, by the way, every one of his women would took him away from his heart away from God. The Bible says, he said they took him away heart away from God. He got caught up in building great buildings and got caught up in studying the world. Huh? And he forgot about God. He built a great temple for the Lord. I mean, God came in and filled the temple and pushed men out because there was no room for man after he dedicated the temple to God. But he forgot about it. He spent more time on building his house than he did the house of God. Hmm? That's saying something. Hmm. But here, he, said, but he, looks at, he, he looks at the women and goes, man, I don't understand them. A man with a maid. I don't understand it. And so we have a couple of illustrations uh, or a couple, a couple scenarios uh, about man and a woman. The first one is, uh, is a man has way, many ways and methods to get into the company of a maid. In a good sense. By the way, the sense should be this. Man seeks after God. The anointing of the Lord's upon him. That he's so in love with God that that woman comes into his life and it doesn't become his all his focus where he forsakes God. Forsakes the reading, the praying, the church, church, the witnessing. He still does all that. That's most important to him. Hmm. His wife is just the helpmeet in his life that's going to complete him. As one preacher says, a man's not completed till he's got a wife. Hmm? <laughs> and that's really a good statement because most men want wives. Most men nowadays, who knows now? Of course, I don't call them men. Right. Hmm? I don't understand. Uh, you know, I've never leaned that tendency. <laughs> huh? I like I like ladies better than I like men. Uh, to me, I'm going to throw it out there for you, men. If you think a guy's handsome or your guy's beautiful or whatever, you might want to come talk to me because I think they're ugly. <laughs> I don't understand a woman like thinking a guy's handsome. I don't understand it. Uh, well, he's so handsome. You know, he, no, he's not. What are you looking at? On the back side of it. <laughs> she likes his wallet. Yeah. <laughs> that may be, there may be some truth to that in some lives, amen. Huh? But the thing is, a woman says, he's so handsome. By the way, that often gets you in trouble when you think a man is so handsome because that's going to blind you to his character and his integrity or the lack of integrity and in character because I've heard of many a girl say, but he's so handsome, but he's a bum. 
but he's so handsome. I don't care how handsome he is. Do you know he's going to look ugly like me eventually? <laughs> Some of you guys say, amen. I, I heard that. <laughs> amen, preacher. <laughs> Huh? All of us, when we were younger, we're hand I got a picture of I got a picture of Paul when he you were about uh, early twenties, huh? And I, I do. I got. A, want me to show it to you? <laughs> I got a picture of it. it. Karen had it, and 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 I saw the picture. I go, that's Paul. When I first found out about a man on the internal, because if he's got good character as a young man and good integrity, and the Bible, the Bible tells us these things will preserve him. You, you, he'll probably, when he gets older, I'm not saying every time, but probably he'll be the same or even better. You better make sure you got the right man. Don't find a man that's, that's athletic. Your a athleticism disappears. It goes away. I tell people I used to run the 40 and 4-3, and I drive it in four days and three minutes. Amen. <laughs> it takes a long time for me to go that far. Huh? <laughs> I can't even get out of bed fast anymore. Huh? I used to be, I used to run. I ran all the time. I don't even walk all the time anymore. Huh? I can't do it. Body failing me. Feel in the joints, muscles, internal organs. You start feeling, feeling all falling apart. Hmm? The only thing that's going to keep you going, as the Bible says, it's going to be wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Find yourself a man who will be wise. Hmm? A man knows how to get into the company of a maid. He can convey sentiments with her in the right manner. He can talk about the love of God and, and explain and convey those messages, the message of the love of God to her. And that he will love his spouse the way God loves the church. By the way, that's what the Bible says a man's supposed to do. Love your wife like Christ loves the church. And he can explain it. And he better have a good explanation, not just saying that. Guys, I'm not throwing things out there. So you have, you have ammunition. To conquer some woman. A godly woman. One guy come up to me and said, Preacher, pray for me a godly woman. I said, when you become godly, I'll pray for you a godly woman. <laughs> Look at that. I don't want God to waste a godly woman on you. <laughs> I said, I know you're not godly. Hmm? You want a godly woman. Why would God waste a good woman on a bad man? Hmm? Men, if you want to be godly or have a godly wife, then you better start out godly. And stay that way. You get, your, you get hold of God. Amen. Don't go looking for the woman. Get hold of God. Yes, you know what a lot of men do? They're afraid they're going to be, they're going to be bachelors all their life. They're going to be kids. You know, that's when they're 19, 20 years old. They're crying like that. <laughs> I did. I was lost. I'm never, oh, I'm never been married. I'm already old. I'm 19. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? I did. My wife and I, I was 20 when we got married. She was 19. I thought I was going to never get married. I have Sam Geckler's son was the same way. I'll never get married. I got to marry. I got to get married. I got to get married. You know what we need to do? We need to get a hold of God. And get to know who God is. Fall in love with the Lord and let God bring the woman or the man by. One guy said, yeah, uh, a woman will find her mate, and a man will find his, her, his mate in the will of the Lord. Amen. If you're outside the will of God, you may, you may find something more than you would like to have. Yeah. You find someone who's going to make your life miserable. Right. But this man knows how to get into the sentiments of the woman's heart. As one, one preacher said, he says, many men know how to win your heart, but they don't know how to keep your heart. There's a difference. Any man can win a, man, a girl's heart, but can you keep it and cherish it? Hmm. But here, the writer of the Proverbs says, it, uh, it's, it's too hard, I don't understand it. 
He wins her sentiments. Huh? He conveys his affections in his heart unto her. He knows how to speak to her heart by his heart. Tell him what's going on in her heart. By the way, that is probably the biggest problem in a marriage is communication and being able to convey your internal messages that's going on inside. Especially as you get older and married and you're married for a long time. You, you just take it for granted. Hmm? Just take it for granted. You don't convey your internal heart messages. You, some, some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. Hmm? Being able to bear your heart to your spouse, Amen. to your husband, to your wife. Hmm? Why? Because it's... Who can know it? It's a hard thing to know. How about this? He knows how to gain her love. And he looks at it, Solomon looks at it and says, it's amazing. By the way, Solomon had a lot of women. I don't think all of them loved him. He was a very wealthy person. Like you said, he, they looked at his wallet. They went into his throne room and looked at his treasure chest. Hmm. He, he, had, he had queens and kings hand, hand in money, hand over fist because of his wisdom. Queen of Sheba came and just unloaded a bunch of stuff on him. From gold to jewels to spices to animals to servants. She just said, here, this is all yours because of your great wisdom. Made him wealthy. And, and the women sitting in the background going, whoa, this would be a, a find. If we can just get hold of him and catch him, we'll have a great life. So what did he do? You know what Solomon did? He started building things for those women and giving them houses. Building houses for them. Giving them palaces. Huh? Now he's got a thousand people <laughs> that he's responsible for plus children. Huh? And he's and he, and he building houses and, he, and he's giving them all the material things but he wasn't really getting love. So he sits there going, this is a, a mystery to me. To gain the love of a woman. Hmm. Sometimes men don't get the one, good love of a woman and still marry them anyway. Right. Hmm. You know what the Bible says? That the older women in the church are supposed to teach the younger women how to, what? Love their husbands. That says something to me. Many a women marry their husbands and aren't in love with them. That the older women have to teach the younger women how to love their husbands. They see many of marriages, they say that stand at the altar and say, I love you, but they really don't mean it. Right. And then and they go to church, and, and the younger women are saying, you know, <laughs> or older women are looking at the younger women saying, you know what, you don't live like you, you're not acting like you love your husband. Right. You, don't, you, you, you treat him horrible. Right. You, here, let me show you, show you how you're supposed to love your husband. And start training her, helping her out. By the way, younger women should be listening to the older women who do love their husbands. Hmm? And listen. Because, you know, they may be telling you the truth. That you don't know how to love your husband. But here's a man, and he knows how to gain the love of her husband, or his wife. And uh, it says, to obtain her in an honorable way of marriage. I mean, just like Joseph did, he, he was honorable towards Mary. Even though Mary was found with child. You know what he did? He didn't put her away. He had the right to according to law. But he didn't put her away. You know what he did? He hid her from the public so that she wouldn't be ridiculed and protected her. Because he was told that she's with child. The son of God. That's that, that child in her was conceived by the Holy Ghost, it says. And so he protected her. Can you imagine when they went to pay taxes? <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Let me, let me see this. You, she's having a child. You guys didn't get married right away. <laughs> she was pregnant before you got married, kind of a thing. Now what's going on here, really? <laughs> huh? But he learned to take care of his wife, even before she was wife. He was honorable. He obtained her in an honorable way. 
Hmm? By the way, that is, that is far and few between nowadays. Men being honorable. Be, have, the chivalry, they called it. Yeah. Where a man opens the door for a woman. Let's do it. I watch the young boys. They'll open the door. There'll be a dozen women waiting for the door to be opened. They'll step right in front of them and walk in. Close the door behind them. Are you kidding me? You know what I usually do? I grab that guy and pull him back. I said, ladies first. I said, well, maybe you need to go in first. You're weaker than they are. <laughs> huh? I have done that. There's a, there's a verse in the Bible that God calls the men women. You know what he says? Israel was led by men who were like women. They led like women. No, he hits them hard. Emotional. Unpredictable. Hmm? And that's what he called them. I read that and I said, look at So when I call them big sissies, I am being biblical. <laughs> I look at a guy and say, you're a big sissy. God's over there saying, amen, brother. You're right. <laughs> When I found that, I found that in the scriptures today. I was saying, look at that. I'll find it for you. I don't have it, I don't have it written down. I don't have it written down. But I believe it's in Isaiah. But he, he called it. He says, they, they're like a bunch of women. I was like, whatever. <laughs> I was going to write it down. I was going to show you. But I was decided not to. Then God tells me to say it. So I did. So there you go. Bunch of, bunch of sissy guys. Sissy girls. Why don't, you act like, why don't you treat the women like honorably? The Bible says you're supposed to treat them like the weaker vessel. If men would treat the women like weaker vessels, they wouldn't have no need for women's lib. That means the man would be treating them with honor. Hmm? Not like doormats. Not like, not like meat hanging on a hook. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Where their eyes bulge out of their head and their tongue hang, drags on the ground. Uh, and that's all they are to you. How about treat them like a human being? Just of the opposite sex. And God says that they're like a, they're the, like a weaker vessel. That means they're fragile. A weaker vessel? You know what you do when you got something very valuable and, it, and it's very fragile? You protect it. You put it in the most protective places. You know what you do when you got something very valuable and you're afraid that it would break or get destroyed? You know what you do? You insure it. Hmm? You know what you're doing with, the, with your wife? With the young lady that you plan on being your... You're, you're going to give her security. <laughs> yeah, she's fragile. There's some women don't want to be considered fragile. I mean, look at them. Look at them nowadays. They don't. I got my hand slapped from open doors for women sometimes. <laughs> I just, I just look at them. I said, I can press 250. How much you press? <laughs> I said, I've had this mustache for seven years. How long you've had yours? <laughs> praise the, <them. laughs> well, praise the Lord. Got off the message, didn't I? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Here's another way. Man has many ways to, and methods to get into the company of a maid in a good manner, but a man has many ways and methods to get into her company in a deceiving manner also. He can deceive her. Oh, I love you to the end of the world. Yeah, right. When a guy says, I'll love you forever and ever and ever, how does he know? How does he know? Is he a prophet? Can he foretell the future? He doesn't know love himself. Yeah, that's right. Most men don't. Most men know lust. Especially the way we've been taught. By the way, on the side, the women have the women's live. Men have everything else that destroys their moral character, like pornography. Huh? So that's how they're taught. That's what a woman is all about. Huh? Playboy and penthouse and all that has done, done horrible damage. Not just to men in general, but to the church. Internet's done horrible damage to the church. Amen. Can I share one thing with you, Pastor? Oh, no. Yes. You said you weren't going to talk anymore, but go ahead. Really <laughs> yes, sir. In, in, uh, a 
Wired magazine mm -hmm. in 2017. You'll see it. It's, uh, if you just pull it up, um, but it's an article that's called The Parent's Trap. Mm -hmm. And in the first paragraph, it talks about uh, Pornhub. Right. And Pornhub having had 92 billion hits in that year. Mm. Now, There's not that many people on the face of the earth. It would take someone 3,500 years to look at any hit. Right. I mean, for every second, it's 3,500 years. Right. They would have to take the number of seconds and just for one second just hit it one time. But when somebody goes in and hits a site, they're going to look at it for more than one second. Yeah. So you can imagine what's going on on their society. Yep. Well, like they say, 85% of uh, uh, websites are pornography. And, uh, and they have they have sneaky ways, sneaky ways to get it, get you into it. By, they hook cookies onto it. And the, and the cookies that they have, they'll, you'll be, be going to Amazon, buying something. Uh, cookies be in the, in the, on the web. Go over, attach to your Amazon, what you're going to buy. And then it takes it over to their site, tells you that you're, you accessed it, and bring it back to your site. And then, so then you start seeing all these, these sites coming up, and you're going, what is going on? That's because it's been told that you access their site. But see, the whole purpose of them doing that is to get you interested. And little young boys. Hmm? And what happens, and the ladies are being punished for it. Because the men have wrong ideas. And now the ladies say, I want to have a godly relationship. I want to, have a re I want to be a mother. I want to have a good husband. That's a, a good father. And, you know, a breadwinner, a, a, a man with character. And she ends up with some guy that's in the night time and, you know, in darkness. And, and uh, when she's not around and blah, blah, blah. And he's surfing the net and watching his pornography. And, I mean, by the way, all this stuff... All this stuff, I, I noticed something about Hollywood. They got all this new rating stuff. Right. It's, it's G, PG, PG-13, 14+, plus, 16+, plus, 17+. Plus. My kid said, what's that all about? And I said, that means you can't watch it ever. <laughs> That's what I tell them. You can't watch that ever. So why? Because, because they, have, they have to rate it for an age group. By the way, how can they say every 13-year-old can watch this? Huh? Is every 13-year-old the same? You know what they're doing? They're hurting marriages. Relationship between man and woman. What they're doing is they're teaching men to be deceitful to their wives or future wives. And a godly woman will see this man. And by the way, I've seen this. Godly women do this to men. Or men, sorry, men do this to godly women. And say they love them, say they're in, they're, they'll serve God to the end of the earth. Hey, we're going to go into the ministry and everything, and next thing you know, the husband leaves the woman after he's tired of her. He gives her three, four children. She's all by herself. He dumps her. Man, what's happened to America? When I was growing up, a man and a woman living together was unheard of without being married. Having children out of wedlock, they had homes for people like that. We had one in our neighborhood. I used to be the paper boy. I used to deliver papers to that place. I knew what it was about. The women would get pregnant as a teenager, and they'd be shipped off to that place, and it was like a hospital, and they'd stay there till they had the baby. And the baby would go for adoption. The parents usually didn't want the baby because it was out of wedlock, because that was the morals of our nation at the time. But now the morals have gone, that if you see that being wrong, you're wrong. They're calling evil good and good evil. And God says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. And so men sit there and talk this woman into having children with him. Talk this woman into marrying him. And then dumps them on the side of the road. So do. I mean, and then the woman's broken hearted and the children are broken hearted. He just breaks his life all apart. Breaks all these people's lives apart. Affects them for the rest of their life. Hmm? I'm just telling you, it's, it's horrible. And children without parents, the men, I'm sorry, without fathers in the home. The statistics show that the children are better off if there's a father in the home than if it's just a mother raising them. Because mother, as hard as she tries, she can't be the father. She tries. She works a job. She's going to have to usually to raise those kids, to bring them up and to pay the bills. Hmm? And the thing is, it really ruins everything. Ruins what God's plan was. 
And I can see Solomon saying, man, I see that good woman over there. And she's with that. I know that guy's wicked. And he's deceiving her. I know he's lying straight to her face. He said, I don't understand. She's supposed to have a, a, an ability to perceive right and wrong. But she can't see it through him. She's in love. He's beautiful. He's handsome. He's a Absalom. By the way, Absalom was a handsome man, and he had long flowing hair, and everybody thought he was beautiful, but he was wicked in his heart. Well, how do you know? Because God had him killed. That man was wicked. Hmm. How about this? He... He, he gives her a decoy. <laughs> what does that mean? You ever go duck hunting? Put ducks in the water, wooden ducks, to bring other ducks into the water so you can shoot the ducks? Hmm? What's he doing? He's saying, let me tell you, I'm going to be a rich man. And before I'm 30, I'm going to earn my first million. <laughs> and she says, well, that sounds like a good plan. It sounds like you got your life planned out. You know, I'm going to go and do this, and I'm going to go and do that. You know, I'm going to be a hard worker. I'm going to get into construction. I'm going to have my own business. She says, that's not a good plan. You know what she's doing? She's setting up a decoy. Or he's setting up a decoy. He's trying to, he's trying to get her to believe something that's not true. You know why those ducks come and fly into that water? And they whack, 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 and they land there. Bam, bam, bam! They're all dead. You know what? Those wooden decoys aren't dead. They're fake. They told him that this was a safe place. It wasn't a safe place. Huh? <laughs> Amen. You know what the wicked man does with the babe? He draws her into impure and unlawful embraces. You say, what do you mean? 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Doesn't even, it, tells, it tells us that it's not right for a man to touch a woman. Amen. When you're not married, you're not to touch him. You say, well, what about holding hands? No, isn't that touching? God didn't, oh, God, excuse me. God didn't, uh, there's, a, there's like a force field here, you know, Star Trek. <laughs> huh? I used to watch Star Trek when I was a kid. <laughs> Sci-fi. Huh? <laughs> what was I thinking? Yeah, not right for a man to touch a woman. Hey, by, by the way, it hasn't changed. Touching her hand. Touching her leg, touching her back, hugging her, touching her face, touching the top of her head, back of her head, touching her ears, huh? touching her lips. And you go on from, and I don't want you to go on from there, but you can imagine, you can imagine what's happening. The Bible, said, Bible says that there's danger in all that. By the way, it leads to something else. And touching in ways, as I said, unlawful embraces. Impure. Hmm? And some of you have already practiced it. You need to not practice it ever again until you get married, until you say, I do. I, I used to have teenagers say this to me all the time. But preacher, I plan on marrying her. I said, then don't touch her till you marry her. But I plan on marrying her. But your plans can change before you marry her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what? And they're not doing anything about that. They're promoting it. Yeah, don't even get me started on that one. I was, I was reading up about that today, this week. I was saying, I said, man, they're promoting uh, uh, impure sex and all that. And they're saying it's okay to continue to do that. But that would be, you'd be spreading coronavirus then. You might as well spread HIV and everything else. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, this world's crazy. And they're thinking, the best way, as Ronald Reagan said, in the script, and he got it right from the scriptures, abstain from sex. Abstain from it. Yeah, fornication, that's right. Yeah, abstain from it. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, we'd be a lot better off if we did that. And by the way, put the, when your kids are little, parents and future parents, when your kids are little, Put the fear of God in them so they won't do that. They said, oh, no. Man, the guys used to always get me fired up. I was, I was uh, preaching to teenagers in Chicago. 
they get me fired up. They go, preacher, what about 1 Corinthians chapter 7? What do you think about that? <laughs> Always bring it up because they wanted me to, they wanted to see me get into preaching about it. And I tell them what it is. And they said, what about you and your wife, preacher? I said, well, let's read on. It says it's okay if you're married. Why? Because you're married. You made a vow. You're saying, I will be with this woman. I will be with this man forever. You got under the marriage law. Hmm? Yeah. Then they go, whoa, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you knew I was going to say it. And I did say it, didn't I? Hmm? They'd like to get you fired up on that because they were trying to find a way out. Right. Even teenagers in church. <laughs> Amen. Another thing a man will do in an ungodly way is design private and secret ways to commit fornication with her. Right. He'd, get all by, he'd find a way to be all by himself with her. Ladies, watch out. That's why we believe in courtship because you can't be alone by yourself with him. We believe that you have someone who courts, uh, who, who is a chaperone, who will be with you and have his eyes on you. It's called accountability. Amen. We know what your foot, my preacher used to say, I don't trust my kids. Why? Because they're made of flesh. Right. <laughs> your flesh can uh, all of a sudden rear up on you, and you can desire things that you shouldn't desire, and you not even know you're going to desire them. A chaperone will help put that uh, into that. I tell, I tell people, you, you're going to have a chaperone? Guess what? You're also going to feed the chaperone couple when you go out. Yeah. You go out to a restaurant, that chaperone's with you. Yeah. I've done that. I was a chaperone at, uh, at couples going out. Yeah. Guess what? My requirement is that you're buying my meal. Yeah. Say so what? You want, hey, you want a quarter, and, and, and we believe that you need to have a chaperone. Because you're not, hey, you're not trustworthy. And she's not trustworthy. You guys both get alone. You're going to start, in, especially you get in the dark, get in the secret places, things are going to happen. Yeah, right. hmm? yeah. When you're younger, you're saying, well, just stay out of my business. When you're older and you're a parent, you're saying, get out of his business. Get out away from him. <laughs> get away from her. All of a sudden, you see it different when you're a parent. Like one guy got all, he, he, he stole his wife, so to say, his future wife. He did things to get his wife that, that made people mad. And then he had a daughter. Hmm? And now he says, any dirty dog fox try to get into my house and take my daughter, I'll kill him! <laughs> your, 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 your mindset changes. Well, you need to have that as a young person. Remember that that girl is another man's daughter. That girl is a mama's daughter. That girl is loved and protected by the parents. So don't violate that. If you think of violating that, you're exactly what I'm talking. You're a deceiver. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? Amen. You ought to come the right way Amen. to get yourself a wife. Amen. And God will bless it. Hmm. Look over at Romans chapter 30, verse 20. Isn't that kind of interesting that he puts this verse right after this? It says, in the way of a man with a maid, verse 20, such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. You know what they did? That's saying? I done it in secret, you didn't see it. Hmm? I done it in secret, you didn't even see it. So it wasn't done. Hiding my sin. By the way, ladies. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Someone told me the other day, you, can't, you, you shouldn't read people's faces and stuff. But yes, you can, and yes, you should. The Bible says you can know them by their countenance. When ladies are violated by men, it shows all over them. All over them. You're trying to get away with it. Something's wrong. You can see it. Countenance is different. Some of the light's gone out of your eyes. Same thing with men. I had someone come in my office one time trying to convince me. <laughs> convince me that nothing was wrong. I said, no. I said, why are you trying to convince me? 
I said, something's wrong with you. You're done wrong. And then they started crying. And guess what? They admitted they'd done wrong. I said, I can see it all over you. I had a guy come to my office one time, and he was like, you can see, it's like someone hit him in the head with a sledgehammer. He was, I mean, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, his, his countenance was gone. And I said, what's wrong with you? And then he started unloading everything that happened. I said, I knew something was wrong with you. You can see it. I'm telling you, God reveals by a man's countenance. Huh? You can read in Proverbs 9, 17 and Proverbs 7, 13 through 23, and you can see about the, the people doing things in secret. The husband has gone. He's gone on a long journey. I got my bed all made, you know, aloe and cinnamon. And, you know, my bed's all made just for a, in secret. No one's going to know. I always, you know, when I read that, I always think, you may have it on the calendar when the husband is coming home, but he may come home early. <laughs> Huh? You think you're going to get away with it? There is one husbandman that's watching all the time. His name's Jesus. Amen. You ain't getting away with nothing, neither am I. Amen. Huh? Be sure your sin shall find you out. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap. Huh? Through all this, guess what? We have the man, his name's Jesus, and we are the bride. And how he gets us is the right way. He, there is another one. Another God. Small g. Who tries to get us the deceiver's way. Trying to take pure people. People who are trying to follow God. And he comes in and deceives them and says, look at what I have for you. Look at the glitter of all the world. Look at the fun they're having. Those are decoys. Until he gets you in amongst the decoys. And then he pulls out his shotgun. Boom. Mossberg to the head, amen. It blows you away. And here's the thing, and you know what the music you're talking about, because I used to be into rock music and all that stuff. You got to get rid of it. You got to put it to a side and and replace it with something that's good, so God can speak to you. Because so you got to put in, and I and I've taught that here. Uh, you got to put in music that has uh, more melody and harmony than rhythm. Because here's what it does: rhythm feeds the flesh, the harmony feeds the soul, melody feeds the spirit. See, the music the kids sang tonight and, and, and uh, Ronnie sang was melodious music to draw the spirit, to may have your spirit speak to his spirit so that when you hear the teaching and preaching, you're awake, you're alert. See, if I feed the flesh and everybody gets fleshly, you lose them. They won't want to hear the spiritual things. Why? Because... The flesh can't handle the spiritual. It's too much for me. It's too tough. It's, it's hard. It's boring. See? Because, the listen to this. The Bible calls it this. The harmony of what? The Gospels. Why? Because harmony feeds the soul. Amen. See? And as people read their Bible and they quote it and they say, this is... This is like poetic, like me melodious. It's like, just like all flows together. Because it's feeding the Spirit. Yeah. Teaching the Spirit. Say, yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And we have three daughters. Mm -hmm. And we taught them the Word of God, and we read to them the scriptures, mm -hmm. and we sang songs and hymns. And when they go to bed, and I was in the choir, and I sang, so they're always in practice, but I was singing godly songs. I know hundreds of godly songs. Mm -hmm. And I would sing and rub to back and sing songs, mm -hmm. different songs and different hymns. And I would just sing and sing and sing to them. Right. And so it's all in their spirit, mm -hmm. and so they know that spirit. So when they hear another spirit, they know it is not mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. If you've never heard a good thing, if all you've heard is gunshots, right. people on drugs, people on cause, all you see mm -hmm. in violence, you think that's what the, everybody does. That's how, how we do. The only blessing about mm -hmm. amongst the, being amongst the darkness is when the light shows up, it's brighter than it's ever been. Amen. Because the dark, the light is always brighter in the darkness. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is uh, you can have a example. We put that addition on our house, bathroom and everything. And when I, had night, I put a night light in there. Without that night light, it is dark in there. But that night light comes on and it's just, it's like a, a three amp bulb. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's almost like an LED little bulb that you would see, you know, one LED bulb on one of these televisions. But it lights up that whole room when it's on. See, it's bright, and but you would you know, you wouldn't be reading by it, but you can see. That's why it's a nightlight, and you can go in there, and you can you can I can wash my hands. I can go in there, see the door, know where everything's at in the bathroom, because of this nightlight. See, light is brighter in the darkness. Mm-hmm. Right. And there was something here local in which said parents uh, had your child and they had that your security said no mm -hmm. to where they believed that the security was well enough to protect them. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the child started crying to his mother and father saying he was he spooked. I mean, right. And what they found out that there was uh, through their monitoring system. And because it had audio and video capability, mm -hmm. someone had plugged a app that attached to their system mm -hmm. and came and started talking to a microphone. Oh, and really? A little kid. And so he started screaming. And when the parents came in, they basically said, now people can come in and look at your home and in your home, your television mm -hmm. right. and all your cameras. Right. And it got that, that far. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the best thing that the FBI, you know, they did their investigation, so the FBI started basically saying that if you have a flat screen TV of sort to put electrical tape over the camera and right. the TV right. so they can't get in. So right. everything's being seen. All right, all right. Even, even a lot of TVs now, they can see through the screen. They're like a two-way mirror. Mm -hmm. So they can see all the kind of, you never know. They said the best thing to do is unplug it. And they back it up Take all the power away from it. And now everything, now everything is Wi-Fi, yeah. Yeah. everything. So they, they don't even have to have wires hooked up anymore. And they can, tell you, I know, it's evil, it's wicked. But back to the point about the uh, maiden, um, but we see the devil's always going to try and get you out there. He's going to try to take you away from Jesus Christ. Amen. And you got to be wise, discerning. You got to know what's right, what's wrong, and. Uh, it's best you stay away from as much of this world as you can. Yeah. really is. It's the yeah. best. And uh, because this world has, the Bible says two things about the world. One is there's no good in it. And the other one, it's all evil. That's what God says. So you got to be, you got to be alert to that. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, would you eat decon rat poison? It's 99% wheat, 1% arsenic. Well, that's what the devil's going to offer you, too. He's going to say, look at all this good stuff. Oh, don't worry about that one little bad thing over there. I tell him if the devil can get a toenail in, he's going to get his whole foot in. Right. Huh? That's what he's working on. Huh? Eventually, he'll be inside. The Bible teaches us that you give place to the devil. And I, my, my response to that is, and he'll take his place. See? Go ahead, open the door to him. He'll come in. Hey, he's not shy. He's waiting for you to open the door. Hmm? And uh, I'm telling you, it's, 
said, it's a wicked, wicked world we live in. And devil, look at devil's all evil, the Bible says. There's nothing good in Satan. Right. Nothing. He failed. He's a loser. And eventually God's going to cast him in the lake of fire and they're going to be the greatest shout that we've ever heard. Everybody's going to say, no longer can he touch man. Man is free. For sure. There's no more. Uh, our flesh, sin, nothing can, uh, nothing can bother us. We're going to, we're, the, the, what the world is looking for is what Christ has offered us. Amen. The world's looking for it. They want that utopia kind of life. Huh? Where everything's going to be just joy. Hmm. Well, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to understand what we heard. And God, I pray that you get glory from it all. Help us not to be taken by the pleasures of this old world and the glitter and lights, deceptions and the decoys. And God, help us to realize we belong to Jesus. We're bought with a price. We're not our own. And you, have, you mean no harm to us. You only want good for us. And we thank you, Lord. Use this time, Lord, especially these young people. Oh, may they make commitments to say, I will be sold out to Christ and do all I can to stay pure. And God, boy, we need some pure Christians, pure teenagers, clean, pure, undefiled. We need some adults to be pure and clean and undefiled also. God help us keep these children from getting caught up in the things of this old world so they don't have to battle it all their life because they've got influenced by it God many of us older Christians can tell us that we're fighting and fight often the influence the world had on us thank God for Jesus and his mercy and grace to help us. Thank you for your goodness and mercy that follows us all the days of our life. Lord, we praise you for it. And your heads bowed, eyes closed. A few people are praying. If you feel the Lord is leading you to pray, this is the time to do it. I don't know. You Something might have been said that's brought to your attention that you need to deal with. Amen. I'll praise the Lord.